have ourselves a spread out here. Oh, only some can come outside simply because A, space, and B, some are in bud and I don't want them to blast. So I pulled some cattleyas and some lelias out to show Nico. Here's the cattleya fix for today, my top guns. Thank you everybody else for joining me. I really appreciate having you here. It's been a while since we've seen some of these. And uh, well, Nico asked for a video, likes to see cattleyas. I am happy to oblige, especially on a gorgeous sunny day. We've had some seriously cold weather and uh, it's nice to get these off the shelf and have a look and see how they're doing after a couple of weeks of just dealing with blurple lights. So these all live on the very top shelf of the dining room area, right under blurple lights that I have installed for them. They do come down at least once a week for me to have a look-see or I go up on a step and I just have a little browse over the surface of them. But this is the first time they've actually come down and are able to be outside and enjoy some sun. So let's get on with it. I have at first point, when I took the pots down, I was assessing the weight in order to see, do they need water in their reservoirs? And if so, which kind? Because as you can see here with my Lelia Perparata variety Backhäuseri, she is growing a beautiful, beautiful growth. This is a winter growth under blurple lights. I am super impressed because I can see that the pseudobulb is going to be bigger than the previous one grown in summer. She is coming on a treat, but her pot is very light. So this is exactly how I like to do things during the winter. The reservoir is empty. The microfiber is still damp. So this is timing for me to put in some fertilized water because she is growing after all. And I would like to maintain the momentum of that growth. Not much. I don't fill the reservoir up to the top of what its capacity is, but I do make sure that the orchid has access to fertilizer. Very, very pleased with her. And as I go through them, I shall take them inside so as not to burn the leaves. The next pot that I felt was pretty light was my Coilostylus ciliaris variety Orstedii. And this one, aha, uh -huh. nice, we've got some roots attached to the microfiber. That is great news because I did have a repot session with this one. And all I did in this case during the summer was up-pot her. So even though she feels heavier than all the others just in Lekka because there is still lava rock in here, I didn't want to mess and destroy the roots of this orchid by removing the lava rock. And all I did was fill up around the edges and then eventually she will be able to be taken apart but the roots have already acclimatized to Lekka and that's why I'm liking this. That's good to see all the roots going down. The pot is empty, the microfiber is damp but all that is going on in here is just a root growing orchid which at this point doesn't need much fertilizer. So the intention here is just to maintain the moistness of the microfiber and I've got some rainwater for that. We've had lots of rain. Might as well take advantage. So Orstedii is not doing much except growing roots, which I would think is a fantastic sign. Good to see how she's coming into sort of the Lekka front and I can then eventually divide her and she'll be happy with Lekka only. Here is Lelia purpurata, the variety striata, also growing a winter growth. This is great. The pot feels light, but it would right after holding something up that had lava rock. But there's plenty of water in the reservoir. I don't need to add anything here, even though she's growing. She's not growing as fast as she would in the summer. But needless to say, just to keep that microfiber damp, and she's got plenty of what she needs. This is looking great. Loving it. Let's go to the Dawiana. Let's check her out. So her growth is maturing. 
This is the winter growth. Pleased with that. It's a little bit smaller, not by much, maybe two centimeters smaller, but that's okay. We have another storage structure, making the orchid stronger. I'm happy with that. That's perfect. Now let's have a look-see. There's enough water in the reservoir. That's plenty fine. The next time I do something with these orchids, it'll be a complete flush. Seeing as the growth has now matured in this case, I don't need to fertilize her until I see the next step or the next growth coming. So that will be a full flush once this reservoir has been absorbed. Wonderful stuff. Next up is my Lelio Cattleya Dinar Blue Heaven. Getting heavier, but not because of new growths, but because of the roots that are growing in the pot. I can feel it. I can feel the weight of the orchid changing based on what's happening inside the pot. Reservoir is good and full, or let's say full enough. I don't fill my reservoirs to capacity in the winter, but this orchid is getting heavy. So there's a lot of root action in here, which is amazing. That's good, great news. Let's look at another sleeper. I think she's asleep. Here is Chunya Good Life, number one. Well, yeah, of course she's asleep. She's just finished blooming, just, in orchid terms, just. You can see how much deposit I have up here that needs to be flushed. So what I do, in this case, because that needs to be flushed, I don't want new roots that are going to grow to be affected by this. So what I do here, as she isn't growing anymore, I still have fertilized water in the reservoir. Because of the blooming at the time, I'm going to empty out this reservoir and use the mask twice to flush the orchid. It's not going to take all the mineral deposits away at this point. I can see on the surface there's far too much, but at least it will dilute it a little bit. And that's as good a start for now. So two times the size of the mask through the pot. And if there was a new growth, of course, I wouldn't be so radical around the base. We're expecting some nice sunny days in the coming days. So I'm not concerned about the wet surface. The angle of the sun is reaching beautifully now into the dining room. They'll be fine. Now, I did not fill the reservoir with any water because she's just been completely flushed. The microwave fiber is super wet and whatever now drains through the LECA stays as my method of keeping that microfiber damp. So the roots, as they grow, they'll be fine now. Who else? Who's up next? Let's look at Mailman. Mailman is super heavy. Gosh, even after the division. Let's have a look. Oof, that is too much. That is too much in the deposit there. We'll remove some of it. It is fertilized water because the orchid is growing roots. Nice roots. And you know why that is too much? Because in my attempt to keeping the microfiber moist up here, I do spray the surface. And some of it, of course, then drains down into the reservoir. So that's why that has accumulated more water than I would like. But I'm trying to make sure that this isn't the norm. This root tip here is a classic example of what can happen if I don't maintain some kind of moisture on the surface here. So the microfiber helps me out. And we'll take it a little step further and wrap it around there. Loving the root action here. Look at that. Yeah, you're good to go. Who's next? Oh, Durigan. Let's have a look see at Durigan because Durigan feels quite heavy as well. For some reason feels heavy, although not doing anything on the surface of the pot. Whoa. All right. That's awesome. Look at that. That's why she's getting heavier. The roots in the pot 
are getting massive and expanding and I can feel it because the deposit is not full enough to justify that weight. Roots, baby. There you go, Dorian. Good girl. I oh, love it. Yeah, and the leaves are getting hot. So in she goes. Dorian is fine. No need for anything. And you can see how she is absorbing all the fertilizer. There is no mineral deposit at all. Big difference from one orchid to the next. Who's next? Whose leaves are getting warm next? Just to make sure. Yes, they're under purple lights, but sun is a completely different factor. So let's go with African Beauty here. Zagarique Wax African Beauty. Her leaves are getting a little bit warm. Even though this is a growth that matured in the summer of 20, this one here, it should be accustomed to light. After a couple of months of not being in sunlight or not being exposed to this intense light, I don't risk it. So when they get warmish, they come back inside. But let's have a look first. She's not as heavy. The deposit is a bit too full for my liking. And that is also because I have sprayed the surface quite regularly to make sure that those roots don't die off on the lecker. But she's absorbing the fertilizer really well. Got the balance right there. And ooh, look, see. There's an oven starting. Good stuff. That's exciting. How is Brassavola doing? Fine. <laughs> Brassavola Digbiana, <laughs> no problems. Here is my Coilostylus ciliaris cross with Brassavola Digbiana. We've got ourselves quite the lean two going on here. But as she is under direct blurple lights, look at this. There's a new growth coming. And I hope it's going to be upright and not doing some kind of a yoga trick. And I think I saw another nubbin when I was carrying her out. Two, no, one, right here. Let's see if I can help the sun, the sun help me. There. Maybe two growths at the same time. Last year, she pushed out this yoga growth <laughs> right here, a little bit stunted. And that was after dividing her. And then this one came after that. And this one bloomed. And this one was a proper sized one. Now the little yoga one is growing another one. Let's look inside the pot. The reservoir is fine. That's plenty of volume there. Now that she's coming into active growth, that'll be fine. Good stuff. And then I'm not saying last but not least, because of course I've got more top guns, <laughs> but this is um, Brassavola Digbiana. Look at this, you guys. Look at these. Um, maybe I need to move the camera up a bit. <laughs> Seeing as those growths are so huge. Look at that. Last time we saw her, they were already big, but she's just really exploding. And this was the growth that bloomed for me last year. But look at both of them. Both of them have something inside and they're starting to split. And I'm hoping I can see from the bulge in one of them, there is a bud in here. I can feel it. I don't know if you can see the shape of that sheath, how it's bulging out. There's a bud in there. And this one is bulging out. And I would like to say there's a bud in there, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> I'd rather be surprised than be excited about two buds. And uh, yeah, and only have one bloom, but it would be a first time if it bloomed two for me. Gosh, I love this orchid. Oh, I'm not gonna help with the splitting of the leaves. I'm leaving it as it is, but I am watching very closely that it doesn't impede the growth of the sheath. It has to happen naturally. And if it's not gonna happen naturally, I will make a small incision into the lower sheath here to help along. But for the time being, I'm letting the orchid do her thing. And I think we're going to be OK. If not, I will let you know. And now let's go inside and show you why I didn't bring two out, at least from the top shelf. See those buds there? Yeah, that's a little fairy. 
eight buds coming along nicely and there's no way I'm moving her out of that position. It looks a little bit dark in here right now because we've just been out in bright sun, but I have the blurple lights off because the angle of the sun is helping me with enough light throughout this shelf at the moment. So that is why I switched it off. So we have eight buds of little fairy coming along. And you know what? That is that tiny little growth that taught me a big lesson this summer. I got nine last year from a mature growth and she forgave me and is giving me eight this year. And guess who is not coming out to play in the sun? Look at this sneak preview. This is my golf green hair pig. And you can see, sorry for the wobbly camera. You can see I have two blooms this year. Also apologies for the rudeness of interruption in the background there from King, who is barking at the tripod. And before he decides to, now you see that jiggle? Yeah, that's King's nose on the foot of the tripod. Anyway, <laughs> before something goes horribly wrong here, let me say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Yes, I have more top guns, but let me just address the top shelf. And I hope that was for the time being enough to satisfy the Catlia fix. Nico, thank you so much for your request. There are more Catlia videos to come, I promise, especially this one right here. Good stuff. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Bye.